Good morning, it's Candy with The Art of Planning and today I wanted to take just a minute and show you what I use when I'm doing my Bible study. I know that's something that um, we've talked about before, just the Bible studies and the Bibles and things like that, but I just wanted to show you kind of piece by piece what I use whenever I'm doing a Bible study. Okay, so we'll take these away and we'll get into it and I will show you I will show you. So the Bible that I use is, it's a spirit-filled Bible. Um, and I've used this for a long time and it is definitely my very favorite Bible that I have ever used. As a matter of fact, this is the second one. I um, kind of went through one of them. Like the spine got so broken and the pages were just, um, they were really marked up a lot, which was which was a good thing and a bad thing. I really replaced it with another one because the spine was so bad and I was really afraid that it was going to start coming apart and I hated to replace it um, because it was so special and so wonderful and I just hated to replace it. I did consider getting it rebound and then I just decided that I would get another one um, and that's this one. I've actually, I've actually been working in this several years now and I am glad that I did get another one. Okay, and then what do I... Um, what do I use within the Bible itself? I always carry, I have a cover on it just because I like to carry a couple of things. I don't know, I wasn't going to show you this stuff. I do keep some mints and some things tucked in there. We usually take the boys to church with us, so there are those kind of things. But I always keep in it one of these dry highlighters. Whenever um, you use this, it doesn't bleed through the pages which is kind of nice and you can get these in all different colors but I use that in it and then I always keep a marker of some sort which I don't have in here now I just brought these things out of the house I will show you the markers now what I'm showing you also is what I use in a Bible study at home these aren't necessarily the things that I take to church with me but this also the spirit filled Bible is the New King James version if you want to know that. The reason I love the Spirit-Filled Bible is because it has some study helps in it that I just find kind of invaluable. One of the things is it has Kingdom Dynamics. I'm not going to try to explain these to you guys just because I can't. But the Kingdom Dynamics help me a ton. Okay, I'm trying to get the timer turned on. I can't do that, and I wanted to. Okay, we'll just leave it. The Kingdom Dynamics help me tons. They just help me understand things a lot more. They are in. I did try to look at that before I started filming because I wanted to explain to you exactly what it was and what they meant and all of that, and I, I can't. I just can't, but they help me tremendously, and those are within the text of the Bible at some special places. The other things <coughs> that it has at the end of each chapter, it has what's called truth in action. And those are another way of explaining some things and some verses. And that's just another study help. That's one of the reasons I love this Bible also. So, um, those are two things that I find extremely helpful and again another reason that I love this Bible anything that can help me study help me understand um, I love so that's one of the special reasons that this is one of my favorite Bibles okay so the things the two things that I love to use when I use it are that dry erase marker and then I keep some of a marking some kind of a marking pen with me and then I love to have all sorts of bookmarks also so that I can keep my place so you know every now and then I need references lots of different places I don't use clippies or paper marks or um, paper clips or anything that's heavy because I find if I just want to clip one page those can get heavy, those can make the page um, maybe fold over or something, they can even tear a page. So I try to stay with some bookmarks and I make 
a lot of those. So I just prefer the bookmarks as opposed to any kind of a mechanical or heavy type of a weight. Here's one that's just a little magnetic clip. But again, I've got it clipped on several pages as opposed to just one. So anything that's lightweight will help me mark a place, mark a special scripture, know where to refer back to. I try to keep several of those in my Bible. So, and see, I do have, I do have a clip. There's a little paper clip. I have lots of help, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so there's lots of stuff in my Bible okay so those are kind of the tools that I keep in my Bible to use whenever I'm doing a Bible study okay now the other thing that I use I want to kind of keep a kind of some kind of sense to this whenever I shared with you okay the other thing that I use is this is a Bible study that I'm doing at home, okay? I use, I use a journal and I use a size that's called B6. I can, I can measure that for you. Let's pull this little guy out right here. And it doesn't make any difference. Use whatever size you want. Use a little notebook you get at a dollar store. Use um, use whatever size you want. Again, there's a reason that I use this. Okay, this one is like a little over four and three quarters by almost seven. It's like six and I don't know. It's just almost seven. It's called a B6 out there in the journaling world. I have to have lines. I can't write without lines. I don't write really well with lines, so I have to have lines. Um, there's all sorts of notebooks that you can get. Again, do whatever you want to do. It doesn't have to be expensive. It can be a wire bound notebook. It can be absolutely anything. It can be a notebook that's got ring bounds in it and you just buy lined paper at Walmart or something. Do whatever you want to do. I went to B6 because this is the journal then that I put everything in. This is a Chic Sparrow notebook. It's a size B6. So I can put my notebook in here whenever I get finished. I keep it out right now because I just write in it every day. So it's easier than putting it in and out of the notebook. But this is the notebook that it will go into whenever I get it done. And it is a size B6, so I used to jump all over the place with the size of notebooks that I got. And one day I decided, duh, I want to keep them all together. I want to keep it in the same notebook. I want, to, I want everything to... I decided one day, let's just keep it simple. Whenever I first started doing this and all of the journaling and all of the planning and, and all of the planners and stuff, I really was all over the place with sizes and kinds and... You know, I was just playing and having a good old time, but it got too much and too all over the place and too many different sizes. And then I decided um, that wasn't the way I wanted to do it. So, again, one size so I can keep them all in one place. So it's just real easy to do that like that. Okay, so this goes in here until I get finished with this notebook. And the study that I'm doing, it goes on top like this. So I have easy access to it absolutely every single day. And that's how that goes. Right now it goes with this bookmark on top until I need to mark a place in my daily work, which I do sometimes. And sometimes I just clip that, okay? So this is the journal that I use. I do normally go in and do a little bit of decorating um, because I just like a journal that's got some stuff in it. 
I usually do that beforehand, get it all ready to go for the next Bible study that I'm working on. Like right now, in anticipation of what I'm going to be starting in just a couple of days, today on my agenda is to work on my new blank journal for the new Bible study that I'm doing. Okay, so that's what I will be doing today. Now, these are the pens that I use whenever I do my Bible study at home. They are the Stadler Tripless Fine Liner. I, they're just fun. I have them. I kind of use a color coding system whenever I do my Bible study. And in the set of 20, there's plenty of different colors to do that with. And I just keep them with all of my stuff whenever I do it. In this particular one, just in case you want to know, every other day... I used a different color. This one was, okay, I didn't on this one. I had to start two notebooks on this. It was a 40-day study, and I had to go into my second notebook. I did, the whole thing was kind of purple and turquoise, so I did purple one day, I did turquoise the next. That was to help me know what day I was on. Um, so that's just how I did it. So in the Bible, that's what I did too. One day I just used a turquoise pen. The next day I just used a purple pen. <clears throat> Today I was confused. I grabbed the bluer pen rather than turquoise pen. That happens some days too, okay? So those are these pens. Yes, I could just stick with two. Yes, I could pull out two. Yes, I mean, there's all sorts of different stuff I could do. This just keeps everything together for me. I keep the notebook. I mean, this is just what I do. Maybe it'll give you some ideas. Maybe take these ideas and um, adjust them to what you do. Maybe they'll just give you some thoughts, okay? Okay, and then, finally, what I have been on now, and you have seen this before. This is the devotional that I am doing right now. It is called Sun Stand Still Devotional. It's a 40-day devotional. For me, it has been much longer than a 40-day devotional because I have not stayed with it every single day. However, God works even when we are not as faithful as we should be. Because today, what I did was day 35 because that's just where I was, and the devotional was absolutely, positively incredible, and it could not have been any more timely if I had done day 35 back when I should have done day 35. So, it's just, I mean, God is so faithful when I'm not faithful. I will speak for myself. I won't speak for you. Um, this is wonderful. If y'all have not had a chance to do this, if you're looking for something to do, I know that there are all sorts of Bible studies out there that are absolutely wonderful. If you've got something that you're digging into right now, stay with that. If you're looking for something you want to do, this is wonderful. I have a new one that I'm going to start in a couple of days, but this one is incredible. Um, today, day 35, the Bible reading was 2 Kings 6, 8 through 23, and honestly, it, if it had been tailor-made for today in the situation that our world is in today, it could not have been better. It talks about Elisha and him being so absolutely positively full of faith and him being such a man of God and it's it's just incredible and it talks about because he's such a man of God that the connection that he has with God and about Elisha being able to pray to God and God opening the eyes of Elisha's servant and Elisha's servant even being able to see in into the heavenlies and actually seeing what God is doing in the heavenlies and, you know, I just can't, can't help but think, what if we could see, what if we could see what God's doing right now? 
we can't see it and all we can see right now is a little bit scary and it's but Jim and I went for a walk today and it was so beautiful this morning and it was so quiet and it was so peaceful and the air smelled so good and I said Jim I mean all we look around and see is absolute beauty but we turn the TV on and it's it's scary and it's chaotic and people's lives are turned upside down and and it's just I mean what we see on TV and what we experience right here right now are two different things but what if what if we had the kind of faith or what if we had a, a prophet right beside us and you could pray to God and God would open our eyes and we could see what God is doing. We can't see what God is doing, but we can have the faith that God is working even if we can't see it. And I mean, this devotional was just stunning. And I hope that you guys have on long enough to hear that. I have the faith that God's doing something wonderful even though we can't see it if we just have the faith faith opens our eyes so that we might see the god who is already at work on our behalf and if we have the faith we can know that he is at work on our behalf even though we can't see it with our physical eyes so um, dig into a bible study that you've got because that's what feeds our heart right now and that's what feeds our soul right now because there's not much there's nothing else that will feed us right now because what we can look around and see with our eyes won't feed us good things it will feed us fear and it will feel, feed us distraught things and scary things so dig into whatever bible study you have if you don't have one hook up to one there are, there are ones over the internet and there are what but be careful what one you use also um, use some discernment in finding a good one that you can use if you need to go out to the dollar store and get a notebook that you can use and you could journal in and you can study with do that um, there are wise people who have said the dullest ink is worth the best of memories write godly things down write scripture things out the bible is the best thing you could ever do if you can't do a devotional right now open your bible and read god's word straight from the bible so i have no idea what time we are at i have no idea how long this has lasted but those are the tools that i use whenever i study um, my bible so you know what you can get any of those for a couple of dollars anywhere if you've got a bible just plug into it and read god's word and write it down on a notebook um, on a piece of paper whenever it speaks to you so i hope that some of that some way spoke to you because god's working even if we can't see it so know that know that god is working even if we can't see that with our eyes so love you stay safe and i'll talk to you next time okay bye guys